So we've safely isolated the supply, we've taken the cover off. We've also disconnected the remote stop start element of this because the video that we looked at initially upstairs in the classroom with Matt and Joe had the direct online starter only and we added in the remote stop start. So for this video, we've disconnected the remote stop start and we, Matt's gonna talk us through the connections going on in here. So what's going on, Matt? Okay, and guys, so we've got number one connection here and that's where our line supply comes in. So our main live supply comes in to number one here. Okay and then it comes out on number two and directly down to the motor below. We come in on number three with yes. the neutral conductor. We come out of number four. Yes. And then it loops back round oh, yeah. into number five. Okay. I think we did that on the drawing quite well. Yes. And then out on number six, again to the motor below. So we've got this box here and that is the overload relay. And so that's where the, that's why we go through, we loop through all of the contacts with the neutral conductor yeah. to ensure that all of the overload relay is, is, is being used. Okay. That's the reason for it. This overload itself, can it be changed? It looks like we can unscrew it and take it out. Is it interchangeable with yes. other overloads? Yeah, so, so th this one is rated at approximately about 13 amps. Okay. You can quite easily remove that to put a smaller one in. And while we're here, just for the AM2 and AM2S, can you just remind me what this little little dial is doing here? Because okay. I know on AM2S you have to fiddle around with that That's at some it. point. So we'll just move this up. You've got a little arrow here, okay, a yep. little arrow head. And again, just with a screwdriver, you can just re you can just turn the this dial around okay. to whatever setting you want it to be on. So at the moment, that's reading approximately, let's say 10 amps. Okay, so the motor that would be below, normally on AM2S and AM2, there's a rated plate that you have to set your overload to, or it could be in the specification. Yes. Moving forward, they might even ask you to calculate, but it's vitally important that we set the overload appropriate to the motor that we connect. Yes. Everybody's motor is different as yes. well, so that's another yeah. key thing to remember. Yeah. If you look on the line conductor where it comes in on number one, we also have a, as a loop across to number 13. Okay. And then from number 13, which is a normally open contact, yep. it then goes across to number 17. To take note that number one, number 13, and number 17 are permanently live connections. Okay. This is the start button. Yep. Okay, so it's a normally open start button. Yep. And so on the other side, number 18, the connection then goes from 18 to number 14, okay. which is the other side of the retaining contacts. So the start, start button in this case is in parallel with the retaining contacts. Brilliant. We then take a smaller cable. So there is something slightly different on this one. On the drawing, we showed a separate stop button. Okay. So on this one and on many um, online starters, the stop buttons are actually interconnected into the overload relay. So the green button that I saw on the front of the actual direct online starter is here. Is this one. And the red button is here. Is okay. this one. Yeah, for the yeah. stop, okay. So normally, we, if you look on the drawing upstairs, we went from here to the stop button, yeah. and then out of the stop button into 95 uh, or right. 96. Okay, yeah. In this case, we come directly from here, going through all the way into 95. And are these links that are normally actually in the actual direct online starter, it looks like that, you know these have been added in afterwards. Do they come pre-linked or are they? Uh, you have to link them up yourself? Again, when you buy an online starter, it only comes with the actual contactor. You buy the overload relay separate, Okay. but the wiring's all there. You just have to physically do the connections into 95 and 96. And that's what you're explaining to me. That's yeah. brilliant. From 96, so it comes through into 95, which is a normally closed contact. Right. It comes then out of 96, yeah. and then that comes all the way through, and it's quite hard to see on here, but terminals A1, oh, which right, is the coil. That's set back, yeah, it's so set it's back. set back here, so that's yeah. A1, and we explained that on the other video presentation, it's probably a little bit easier to see it on a drawing than yes. it is in reality, so you yes. need to look in there and look for A1, yeah. Yeah, A1 here, and then on the other side, A2, yeah. which is the neutral connection, links across from the neutral, into the neutral connection here. So A2 being the other side of, of the coil. coil. So we've got to energize the coil. So in other words, we need line on A1 and we need a neutral on A2. And you've taken it from this front neutral connection out of yes. number three yes. and effectively swung between the two terminals there. That's it. Okay. Really important not to take a neutral from this termination because remember, like we said on the video previously, yeah. that goes through the contactor 
And for in order for the contact mutual to be operating, yep. your contact needs to be in play. So that was number five. We don't take it from number five. No, we no. did that in a previous video presentation. We come from effectively the permanent neutral, which is That's in number it. three. Yeah. So on A, is it A1 and A2, those terminals at the back? Yes. So one of them's got a line connection, one of them's got a neutral, and effectively that creates a magnetic field that pulls in the contactor. And the contactor is this thing here. Yep. So if you, as you push that in, it physically pushes in. And so now the contacts. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's good. Yeah, so it's in and then let go and now. Okay, so that will that's what we hear, don't we? We energize yeah. it and we hear doo -doo, that's yes. the contact yeah. yes. being pulled in. In other words, the energization of a coil. Right, yes. right fantastic. There's a couple of other things um, on this one that we'd I'd like to just draw your attention to that we didn't maybe show upstairs. Okay. Is the CPC. Ah, yes. So I think I represented the CPC connection um, just with a little green square okay, upstairs yeah. on the drawing but obviously the CPCs are it's paramount that the CPCs are all connected properly exposed conductive part yeah. CPCs are in the back we were concentrating obviously on the line and neutral connections yes. and the importance of getting them correct but yeah you're right the CPCs yeah. need to be in there as well yeah we also have so when we said about the normally normally closed 95 and 96 terminal yeah when this trips if there's a if there's an, an overload for whatever okay. reason on this particular type you can ha manually reset it. Okay, so that's a, that's a reset button there. Yes. If the motor was rated at 10 amps, it, it had a, an overloaded condition, maybe we put the motor under too much stress, it yeah. started taking 15, 16 amps, it would obviously trip out, but then we can manually reset it reset here. Reset it yeah. there. Oh, right, really yeah. good.